Now what is up my fellow prodcoders? Welcome to this video and today we will actually start logging users in based on their email and their password. So right now our authentication system logs everyone in like no matter what uh, username, email or password you provide uh, we just create a session for you. And of course this is not the way <laughs> it's supposed to be so we want to only log someone in if the email and the password uh, first of all if the email exists and if the password matches the one that we also stored okay so a couple of things here the first thing we need to do is we need to actually put in a json parsing middleware why because we need to extract um, fields from the payload of the request so before we didn't really care like I just put in like this dummy placeholder here um, but right now we actually do care what the user sends and another thing I made a little mistake before it must of course be request of body and not request right we extract the email and the password from the request body and uh, one more thing which you should always do is um, perform payload validation right so say if um, the end user did not provide like an email or did not provide a password then we will say uh, unauthorized or maybe let's say 400 bad requests and we will say um, bad request params you need to provide a username and uh, an email and a password and a password okay now the validation we have here is like pretty basic so i would say in prod um, always use a validation library like uh, joy so that's the one i typically use uh, for this tutorial, uh, we only do basic validation, right? So only put it here as a comment so that you remember that like you know where to go and what to do. But I don't want to get into detail on how to do proper request validation. That's yet another uh, thing we can talk about in another video. Cool. So now that we have our email and our password from our request body, we actually need to reach out to the database and fetch a user by email and then compare the password hashes. Okay. And one more thing, like I assume that you have watched uh, my video about password hashes and um, because in there I cover what bcrypt is, what a password hash is and why we never ever ever store plain text passwords. But why we always store uh, password hashes. Uh, so in case you haven't done that, uh, please pause the video and check that one out before because for the remainder of this tutorial, I will assume that you know what bcrypt and what hashing is. And by the way, speaking of bcrypt, uh, we need to npm install it. So let's say npm install bcrypt. And um, yeah, now we need to look up the user by email. So in order to do that, let's create a new directory and let's call it service. And inside this service directory, let's create a file called auth. So the controller itself shouldn't be concerned with uh, like the actual login logic. Uh, the controller should only be concerned about, you know, um, doing some request validation or delegating that request validation to someone else and returning proper status codes. That's the only thing that it should do. Um, it shouldn't contain like any of this logic. And okay, so let's create a function. Let's call it login. And now we need to um, look up user by email. Now the thing is, typically if you look up a user by email, you would reach out to your database to, for example, Postgres, MySQL, um, these kind of things. And 
bear in mind that now it's like a persistent database. So we're not talking about Redis anymore. Redis is only storing our temporary session, but we're actually talking about persistent data, like data you want to keep pretty much forever, or at least as long as uh, you have this application running. And we should not put this logic inside this service here um, because we should never directly interact uh, with the database. We should rather have a wrapper and this wrapper is commonly called uh, DAO or data access object. And the reason why we do this or the reason why we only interact with the database and with data access objects is that if we ever decide to um, switch our database, so say we go from Postgres to Mongo, then we only need to swap out like our data access object uh, implementation. Like we can leave the other things untouched. And this is also one of the main uh, criticism. Criticism. Yeah, I think that's a plural. Um, that I have for a lot of tutorials I found online because they would just use this uh, logic all over the place. They would put data, they would directly access the database using Mongoose or SQLize or whatnot. And they would not put it inside a dedicated wrapper object, uh, which might be okay for a tutorial, but if you run production, it's definitely not good enough. So since we this is not a tutorial about like how to connect to a mysql database i will just hard code like some users here so i just created two of them and let's maybe also give them like a role or like a roles array and let's also give them an id and pretty much the same thing for this guy over here Maybe let's give it like another role, account manager. By the way, uh, right now we don't care about roles at all. Um, I just put this stuff in so you can see how you would implement authorization later on. I just want to have like a unique ID for each user. That's why I will use a UUID. So uh, just go to this website, uuidgenerator.net. Pretty neat. So I just take this copy it and I'll put it in here. So if we were using a database, then this would be your primary key. And we also need to import bcrypt now. const bcrypt equals require bcrypt. Okay, so this is basically our little dummy database. So we have two users. And this is user one at productioncoder.com. This is user two at productioncoder.com and they have different roles, they have different IDs. So these two things don't really matter, but in reality, you would probably have them. And they also need password hashes. So instead of hard coding like some cryptic uh, pre-calculated hash, what I will just do is I will say, um, I think it is bcrypt.hash um, sync and use a one password with 10 salt rounds. Okay, and I will just paste this over here and I will say user two. Cool, so what this does is it says, hey bcrypt, um, calculate the hash for this uh, plain text password and store it inside password hash. And we use hash sync because we want a synchronous call. Like, Typically, you would never ever want a synchronous call in Node because it just blocks the main thread. But since this is like our dumb, dummy database and we only have two users and this is just a tutorial, like I would say it's fine. And then we can say find user by email and then we have email and then we'll return users at email. And if the user doesn't exist, then, well, we just return, or this function will just return undefined. And we also need to export um, this function to do it. Now, typically this um, 
function here would be async because this would actually make a call to the database. So yeah, for us, we could leave it async, but it's, yeah, maybe let's write a comment here. Let's say uh, this call would be async and would return a promise um, if we were to use a real database. Um, so I will just leave it async here so that you know, okay, yeah, it will return a promise. Nice. So this is our data access object and this data access object can now be used inside our service. But before we continue the implementation, I just see that we are already over 10 minutes. So let's just finish the video here and let's continue in the next one. So thank you very much for watching and please make sure to give the video a thumbs up. And also please don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. And by the way, I put a link in the email description down below. So if you are interested in, um, yeah, in having a say in what I cover next on this channel, if you want to vote what I should cover next on this channel, uh, you can leave your email there and I will send a poll around from time to time. Again, thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.